any public safety employee, okay, and this is all striked out, who in concert with two or more other such employees for the purpose of obstructing, impeding, or suspending any activity or operation of his employing agency or any other governmental agency strikes or willfully refuses to perform the duties of his employment shall by such action be deemed to have terminated his employment all right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're talking about Virginia, which is a really hot topic as of late because of all the things that are going on. And basically, let me give you the preface what happened. So you've got this little bitty area up here with a huge amount of population and a great amount of wealth who have basically said, well, since we have all this population, we have all this money, we're going to create all these different districts and it counterbalances or exceeds the number of districts or congressional seats that are in the entire rest of the state. So you've got a lot of left-leaning liberal individuals out here versus the few people who live out here, which means that this little itty bitty area here can tell the rest of the state what they are going to do. And now that the Senate, the House, and the gubernatorial office are all run by the Democrats, Virginia has its first time in availability to really destroy the Second Amendment. Doing that, they've introduced all kinds of crazy bills, uh, uh, what they call assault weapons ban, magazine ban, suppressor ban, uh, anything and everything that they can do that mimics, I guess, California, New York, or whatever. It's the, it's the same old thing that what happens. But what really gets me crazy, and and let me go back to the video I just did, was the, some of the comments, because now I'm getting some of the comments from the left-leaning individuals. One thing, they think people who like guns are nutcases. And it's not true. They're, people who have guns are just good people, for the most part. Uh, secondly, uh, they're like, well, the, the areas in Richmond and whatever, that we have all the money and we have the population, and that means that you got to do what we want you to do. And it's kind of sickening because it does lend itself to the Hunger Games type scenario where this one area with all the population rules the rest, which... I guess if you think about it the way that uh, the, the Commonwealth Virginia Constitution, I guess, is set up, population rules. And there are a lot of people made a, uh, sent me some really good videos on how this was established. The Supreme Court could have gotten involved in this decision about population. The populous areas can overrule whatever happens. Anyway, it was a lot of it was a, a nice civics lesson for everybody, I guess. But what's happening now? is that you have people who have a mindset that is so far from the people's mindset in these rural areas that they are extending, they are going too far, which is creating what in my mind is a, a tyrannical situation. So, and a lot of people in the in the rural counties also, that's, their, that's the way they're thinking. They don't want this little itty bitty area with all these seats ruling what they are doing. So they have come up with this thing called a two-way sanctuary city or two-way sanctuary county. And I think the list is up to like nine, 90 different locations within the Commonwealth of Virginia. Kudos to those areas for sticking to their guns. But what does this two-way sanctuary city thing do other than sending a message to these individuals that maybe, hey, you are voting one way, but we think it different. Okay, which is, I think, in this matter of population, probably 50 50. So, other than sending, sending a message to these people, that's all it is is a message. And there are some uh, legislators, and we covered this in the other video, talking about we need to send in a National Guard if these people don't enforce the laws that we either vote in and sign by Governor Northam. And it was crazy that they would even mention something like that because one, the National Guard's made up the general population, and there's not a whole lot of people. And some people they like ah, screw it, they'll shoot on their own people, guys. That no, I don't believe that for a second. Uh, so what will they do? Cause roadblocks? But then there's some other legislators saying, well, if you don't do the will of what we want you to do, we'll just cut off all funding. Fine, do that. Just go ahead and do that. But then here's the latest one, and we'll get to the point. This is House Bill number 67, and it was authored by Patron Carter, uh, these two individuals. And I'm going to read this a little bit, and I'll put it up on the screen here if I can find my thing. 
Okay, uh, being enacted by the General Assembly, and this thing was authored on January 8th, kind of as an answer to the Sanctuary City thing where the sheriff's deputies said, hey, listen, y'all can write whatever laws you want. We can choose to enforce it or not. And now the legislators coming back and saying that uh, any public safety employee, okay, and this is all striked out, who in concert with two or more other such employees for the purpose of obstructing, impeding, or suspending any activity or operation of his employing agency or any other governmental agency strikes or willfully refuses to perform the duties of his employment shall by such action be deemed to have terminated his employment and shall thereafter be ineligible for employment in any position or capacity during the next 12 months by the Commonwealth or any county, city, town, or other political subdivision of the Commonwealth or any department or agency of any of them. So basically what it said was, and this is a bill and they're going to try to vote it in, is that if the sheriff or local municipality does not enforce the law as written and signed in to law by Governor Northam, they, their employment by such action is terminated. Now, I don't know how they would find out unless they sent in some sting operations, but I know a lot of state guys who are also pro-Second Amendment. So what's happening now is you are seeing an act of tyranny when you have this number of people in this little bit of area who are going to dictate what this entire other rural area does. And I get it. They, they got all the money. They've got all the population. One vote equals a vote. But it's absolutely sickening that they wouldn't think in their right mind, maybe we should think about the entire state versus our little local shithole area we live in. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You guys let me know what your thoughts are about the uh, House bill Number six, seven, that was authored on the, uh, January 8th of 2020, offered January, written on December 5th, 2019. Let me make that correction right now. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I wanted to keep it short and sweet, but this is an act of a tyranny. If you see something that's happening, hey, we'll just create a law that negates whatever you're doing. That is tyrannical, especially when it's being decided by a bunch of little pug-nosed knuckleheads. Anyway, it's Code of Boy 32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless men, women in uniform. 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom's not free. I appreciate all your help in viewing the channel. Oh, we got a cool stuff coming up. We got this really cool, colorful deal. Isn't that nice? <laughs> as well as, hey, O-Light's having a Christmas sale. You know, go figure. So anyway, it's Code of Boy 32. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless men, women in uniform who uphold our Constitution and our right to bear arms 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. Let's go boy 32. I'm out.